All right, it's week two. I'm the White Dragon. And this is Sir Briz. You're listening to the Beyond Unreal podcast. Let's just get right into it. What happened this week? So there were a lot of updates on the GitHub repository for the new UT. Um, and a lot of discussions were opened by Epic employees. And we're going to also address the comments that we got on our podcast last week. And we're just going to jump right into it. All right. So let's start out with the comment that Steve Poolish made about um, competitive gaming. I actually want to read part of the quote that he said here. He said, as you participate in our design discussions, please remember that what's most important is that we have a fun and balanced set of mechanics that work well at all skill levels, support competitive play and reward skill and strategy. Not that we recreate some specific mechanic from a past title. Our goal is to create a game with accessible but deep mechanics that are easy to learn but challenging to fully master. We don't want to bring Unreal Tournament forward by making it more complex, but we do want to improve the long-term reward of the game by providing compelling strategic and tactical decisions at all skill levels. Every tactic should have a counter, every choice should have a consequence. So... I kind of feel like this is some of the, a little bit of a response to some of the the competitive discussion that's been on there cuz I I kind of get the impression that some people feel like that they've been ignored or that they're just worried about if they're actually going to get in the game. Yeah, that's true. Um yeah, I think that he's basically just trying to say you know, there's been a lot of comments on the forums about this game really needs to cater to the professionals or this game really needs to cater to the casuals. And Steve's intent here, I believe was just to say, we need to make a game that works for both groups of people. And hopefully by making a game that is accessible to new players and has a lot of a long-term value in continuing to learn the game mechanics that you'll get to a point where, the new players will want to learn more because they'll see uh, more advanced players playing really well, but they won't feel like they're hampered by the game mechanics at the very beginning. Yeah. So another thing I think is I, I think they're, they're trying to hit home that the competitive community is just as much a part of making this game as anybody else. And I would challenge the people in the, the competitive community to step it up because I've seen a lot of threads where people are saying, oh, well, it would be really nice if Epic does X or Y. And I'm sitting here going, well, why don't you do that? What what happened to the competitive community that put all of the work to create 13 seasons of Major League UT and created some of the most professional, well-done mutators that we've ever had in the game? And I've seen a lot of people making prototypes why doesn't the competitive community get together and say, hey, this is this is our prototype, this is the one that we like? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think that that even extends beyond the competitive community. I mean, Epic, uh, Jim Brown made a post in the forums this week where he basically said that Epic doesn't really value paper designs. And a lot of what people are talking about and complaining about and arguing about on the forums are paper designs, not prototypes prototype is going to have more value to them because they can see how it plays and what people like about it and what people hate about it and it is actually easy to comment on an existing prototype it's easy to say well this doesn't feel like it moves fast enough or this feels like it moves too fast or the dodging doesn't feel right or whatever it may be arguing about the mechanics of previous games doesn't really help with the development of the new game. We want a new UT that's got its own mechanics, that's got its own feel. Talking about how things felt in in previous games, it, it helps to an extent to say this is kind of the the general principles of what I want, but it doesn't really help in developing the actual details of the movement mechanics or the weapon mechanics or the level design or any of that other kind of stuff so the next thing is the um the adrenaline so i was i was actually quite surprised by this one and actually there was actually a poll about adrenaline and 40 percent of the people said we should include it what's your take on that um so yeah i mean i part of it i think is just uh that you know ut 2004 is a recent game that has a 
pretty active community still and it's the one that a lot of people still remember so when you go and look at a poll on the Unreal Engine forums for UT generally what you're going to see is the more recent games that people are playing tilting the polls I think the exception to the rule is UT3 not a precedent <laughs> <laughs> because that that never really community for that never really took it out. So. Yeah, and that you know that game had so many problems that it was never picked up by new players really, and it was never picked up by intermediate players really, and it was never picked up by competitive players really. Like UT three didn't really build its own community like the other games did for really a variety of reasons. But you know, on all the polls, you're seeing a, a huge influx of people that are interested in UT. 2004 mechanics which i think makes sense when you look at you know how recent the game is ut is 15 years old the community surrounding it is very particular now and all the old players that used to play they've gone off started lives and stopped yeah. gaming some of them and and all these different things and just getting them to come back to show interest in a new ut game is a big ask for a lot of those people yeah well you just look at you know, former Beyond Unreal staff, you know, the, the people that I remember as being moderators way back then in the UT99 days, I think Hal is really the only one that's left out of those people. Yeah. And a lot of them, we don't even know where they are now because they got lives. Do you feel that adrenaline can have a place? Because I, I don't know what ideas they might be kicking around over there right now. One of the things that I had posted on the forum was, hey, you know, it could be part of a stamina system where you could, the moves that you perform with adrenaline will affect your movement or it will allow you to do tricks. But afterwards, I, you know, after thinking about it, I was like, but I feel like it just kind of detracts from what makes Unreal Tournament great, which is core combat with the weapons where it's close and it's just complete mayhem. And I'm, not, I'm just not sure that there's really room for it. Yeah, I mean, my biggest complaint about it is just that it's... If you look at UT holistically from the very beginning to today, generally speaking, the fun, wacky things that you can do in the game are reserved for mutators and mods. And to me, the adrenaline idea is a fun, crazy, wacky thing it's like matrix moves somebody's going to go yeah. download it because it looks like crazy fun but you're never going to see it on a competitive server you're rarely going to see it even on a casual server it's just a fun thing to play with in your own time because you enjoy crazy fun things and there were a lot of those things in ut relics is something yeah. that a lot of people brought up in the adrenaline thread that i think is totally relevant relics was a mod for ut and then and, very much, very much inspiration for Adrenaline, I think. Yeah, exactly. And it even became kind of pseudo-official when they included it in the in the bonus, in pack, the bonus yeah. pack uh and on the Game of the Year edition. I just think that that is uh, evidence for the fact that, you know, Adrenaline, these boost abilities are kind of reserved for that crazy, wacky side where you should be able to add them but I don't know that it should make up part of the core game mechanics. Right. Unless, unless obviously, it's changed dramatically. Yeah. Well, and some of the ideas that were brought up were things like maybe it, you know, you get, you gain adrenaline the more you die and you get some kind of a positive reinforcement if you're doing poorly in the game to increase your enjoyment level. And there were a lot of people that were saying that's not a good idea because those people need to learn how to play the game but, you know, part of, part of it is those people need to feel like they're getting some level of enjoyment out of the game or they're not going to keep playing. And I don't think it's right to say, well, if they're not going to put in the effort, then we don't want them in our community. They should belong in the community. We want as many new people to be interested in UT and learn the mechanics as possible. But that being said, I still don't really think that that's a good reason to make Adrenaline a core game mechanic. Yeah. Well, you know, from my perspective, I I don't like games that kind of kind of speaking down to me. Like we know you're a sucky player, so we're gonna give you this this little extra thing to to try and keep you around. I feel like that the core mechanics should be interesting enough that even if I'm not good at them, that I want to stick around. 
I feel like the original Unreal Tournament did really, really well with that. When I came into Unreal Tournament, I really had no concept of being able to strafe around corners and aim and move at the same time. I was like, I would walk to where I wanted to go, <laughs> use my mouth, mouse to find the guy and hit him. And I wasn't good at it, but it was really good at, at stringing you along and getting you better. If, if I was going to take somebody that had never played a first person shooter before and they really wanted to get good at it, I would tell them to play Unreal Tournament 99 first. Yeah. Well, and that, I, I definitely think that's true. I mean, the core game mechanics in UT were just enough. You can go into a game of UT and be like you were, and you can shoot the flak in somebody's face, see blood sp- spray out. You know you hit them. Yeah. You can even, you know, occasionally get a lucky kill, and getting kills in a game like Unreal Tournament is the fast track to interest. The other other side of that, too, is that bot matches in UT were a lot more entertaining. Like, everybody remembers Locke. And yeah. he, he was, like, you know, cheating bot Locke. Like, I hate that guy so bad. I want to go and shoot him a million times. And even today, I'm still like, oh, I hated that guy so bad. But that was an interesting mechanic in the bot matches that again strung you along in the game like i really want to get back at that stupid lock guy and it wasn't even a real player <laughs> right yeah so i don't know I'm, I'm not really into the adrenaline thing sorry guys just just my opinion <laughs> so let's talk about the movement a little bit so we we did have a new version of nick's prototype big things that he did he increased the movement speed which was something that we had asked for and i i I quite like what i see from it now they also changed the the way that the mantling worked so that it's kind of smoother so now when you dodge it's not like you stop and you climb up but you just kind of like sail over it you know yeah and then there's a speed up mechanic so if if you're walking forward um, as you walk forward after a little while, you'll you'll speed up a little bit. I, I know Briz had posted a couple of choice comments about some of that. What did, what, did you, <laughs> what, what are your take on those? So my first thought was on the faster movement. So the faster movement, I think, was necessary. A lot of people were saying that the 600 movement speed was just way too slow. Um, Nick bumped it up to 800 where a lot of people had said that it would feel better and it does. It feels worlds better. A lot of how it feels too has to do with how tall they're making the players and where the eye height is in the player Mm -hmm. model. And it's just a lot higher. It's about, it's almost double where it's been in any previous Unreal Tournament game. So one of the things that they did in, in the alpha version of the game that they have right now is they have a level where they threw in a few of the Unreal Tournament 3 models and they just look minuscule compared to your model. Like the character models are less than half as tall. The weapon models look like little tiny toys on the ground. Uh, just for scale reference, it's interesting to see. Like they obviously want to do better on the player height, eye view height, feel up front this time. On the smooth mantling, I really don't like it personally. Uh, my big thing with the mantling is that I feel like it's a, if it's going to be included, it needs to be a penalty. Like you failed to do something and so you should be penalized for it, but not necessarily in a bad way. I'm just thinking from my experience as a competitive CTF player, there's frequently or occasionally situations where you're, you have an idea in mind of, I'm going to run through this hallway, go up this lift dodge over this way and you go down on the other path, side. And you, you maybe a, you've even communicated that path to your teammates. I'm ex- coming here. Exactly. And in, in UT 2004, for example, you'd bump, if you made any mistakes, if you bumped into a ledge and fell <laughs> static mesh. Yeah. Static <laughs> mesh bad. Like if you, if you hit something and fell down to the ground, there was always just a split second or more of confusion kind of swinging around like crap. What am I going to do now? Cause I messed up. The mantling doesn't take that away entirely because if it has a negative impact, if you have to climb up the wall like it was before, Mm -hmm. then the mistake means you're penalized by climbing up onto the wall. But 
it doesn't keep you from following the path that you are currently following. So it keeps your movement consistent and the tactical ideas that you have in your head stay relevant for a longer period of time. Does that mean that it'll always stay that way? No, but yeah. Well, and the thing is, is that when you're talking about penalties, a lot of this really comes down to flavor, right? Yeah. The, the thing that changes with this is before you screwed up, you were dead and that was the end of the run. Now, with the mantling, I think it kind of keeps things a little bit more interesting because the play continues even though you made a small little mistake. Yep. And I think that that keeps action going. It keeps you into it. And that's something that I think is very much Unreal Tournament. So I do kind of like that. The other side of that coin, too, is that once we play with mantling in an actual deathmatch game, we may say this is terrible and it has yeah. to be removed. But I do think that it you know, I can think of some reasons why having mantling could be a good thing. And for that reason alone, I think that it's worth having a way to experiment with it after there's a playable version of the game. Onto the, yeah, as you're walking, you kind of get a little bit faster. I have a few concerns about this. Basically, any time that you add a movement option in the game that will allow one player to move faster than another or give that person an advantage to get into a different room, get out of the fight, I think you're going to run into some of the issues that you had in Unreal Tournament 2004, where the engagement distances increase, it's really easy to run away, and I feel like Epic is really trying to keep things close. And so that kind of mechanic kind of concerns me a little bit. It sounds to me like they're saying, well, you shouldn't have to dodge all the time to move quickly. Yeah. And, and I understand that, but I don't know. I, I, I feel like if you start running first and the other person is running behind you, they're never going to catch you because yeah. of that now. Yeah. And, and there's to me, there's a few problems with it. For example, when you're playing with it, even with the gray cube levels where you where there's grid lines on the floor yeah. it's still pretty hard to tell that it's happening when you're just running so it's kind of a magic thing that's ha that happens that you can't really sense and i don't personally i don't really like these little magical things that happen but it also seemed like uh steve polge didn't really like the idea that you couldn't tell you were speeding up the only time that you could really feel it was when the speed up went away. When you're dodging or when you're jumping, it was easier to be like, oh, I actually slowed down when I did that action. And in that way, it kind of gave you negative reinforcement for running in a straight line. Like, I don't want to have this weird, like, speeding up and slowing down sense. I just yeah. want to be able to move at a consistent speed. Well, it, it sucks when you feel like you're moving really fast and then they take it down. Like... The game that I'm playing a lot of right now is Planet Side, and in Planet Side there is a item that you can equip on your characters that makes them move faster, and it's very very small. But when you're used to playing it all the time, and then you go into another character and he doesn't move as fast, it sucks. I yeah, hate, I hate that kind of transition, and having that happen to you all the time is just something that I would find very frustrating. Yeah. On the movement thing, so I want to talk about some of the things we talked about last time and, and some of the comments. I've got the impression from a couple of the comments that people kind of thought that we were in favor of dumbing things down. Yeah. Which which isn't really my intention. Part of this is we're just trying to forward the conversation and not just like put out our ideas. But so that you get an idea of what I actually think, personally I actually think that they should give Double Jump a second look. One of the things that I thought Unreal Tournament 2003-4 did really well was Z-axis movement. So if there was a jump pad or there was a lift somewhere and you could jump off of that and it was really fun. And it was really fun to try and hit people when they were doing those aerial moves like that. Like if you got air rocks, that was some of my favorite parts of Unreal Tournament 2004. And part of why it was possible was because there was things that you could actually do in the air to randomize your movement, like the double jump, the wall jump, etc. When you look at the games that didn't have it, Unreal Tournament 99 kind of tried to compensate by having low grav. I think that maybe is why low grav was so popular back then. In UT3, 
it really didn't have any of that. And I, I felt like that that was part of what made it feel like it was just always like a slog. There was never any finesse to it. And I think that that's kind of, you know, people say, I want the mastery of the Unreal Tournament 2003-4 movement. I never personally found those moves to be incredibly difficult to carry out. But there was something about the feeling of finesse that it gave you that I th I think we should try and include. Now, should it be with dodge jump? I'm not sure because there's definitely some compelling arguments where with the map design and stuff like that, it causes problems. And I'd really like to see people try and solve that specific issue. Yeah. I mean, so my opinion on the whole thing is I, you know, I've been in the Unreal Tournament community for long enough and dealt with enough of the communities inside the Unreal community for long enough to know that the problems that double jump and dodge jump caused in Unreal Tournament 2004. And so for me personally, I just don't want to see them come back. I yeah. don't want to see those exact same problems happen again. But that being said, I definitely am not opposed to other forms of movement. Um, wall dodge is something that I think there's no reason not to include it. Um, yeah. it's, it's another mechanic that you can use. If dodging exists, why wouldn't you be able to dodge off of a wall? It makes no sense. You know, there's one thing that I want to say on it along those lines. One thing that Wormbo recommended was that you allow dodging off of other types of objects. Like in UT 2004, you can't dodge off of a static mesh, right? There's no reason for that. Um, another thing that was proposed in one of the prototypes was dodging off of another person <laughs> and it, and you know, maybe that doesn't work in reality, but it is an interesting thing. Like in the prototype, if you dodged off another person, it pushed them back and it actually gave you some momentum to me. Like that seems like an interesting thing. What if there was an impact hammer kind of thing <laughs> where you could do, or you, you know, dodged at the same time you impact hammered somebody and it just threw you across the level. Uh, that just seems like something fun that could be added that maybe would be worthwhile. I don't know, but somebody can prototype it. And I think the big problem that we're having right now is that a lot of the people that are talking about the design of the new Unreal Tournament game, they are talking a lot, but there's no prototypes to look at. Yeah. Epic has said that they, and I said this earlier, that they don't really value paper designs. Right now is the time to prove your idea of the movement and i think i said this last week that the job of everybody that wants to participate in unreal tournament development right now is to prove that their ideas are worth being considered in the general design epic is still going to make the final decision on a lot of these things they're asking for community input and they're taking a lot of input more than they've ever done before but that doesn't mean that the final decision rests with the community. The final decision will rest with Epic. It's their game. It's going to be made the way they want it. And I think for that reason, like I almost hate seeing dodge jump arguments now because so many <laughs> people inside Epic have said that it causes so many problems. And I have yet to see a blueprint that shows dodge jumping working in the scale and you know, so the the you're having dodge have jump today. and solving those problems. <laughs> Or, or having some other kind of similar mechanic. I, I will say, Galanguar did the thing where you could bunny hop afterwards. And that was a good idea, but that comes back to my my thing about that you allow people to move too fast based off of a special move, you're going to increase the, the movement distance. But I think that that's the big thing, is that it, it's not like an a la carte. You can't go in and say, well, I like... I like the idea of dodge jumping and I like the idea of wall running and let's just include all of those things. There's been a lot of arena FPS indie games that have tried that approach and have just fell flat on their face. I think what you need to do is you need to say, I want a game that has this kind of feel. In Unreal Tournament 3, they said, we want something that feels heavy and in your face. And you know what? It was effective at that. They met that goal. It just kind of turned out that Nobody really liked that kind of gameplay. I think that that's really the way that you got to look at it backwards and you say, this is the feeling that I want and prototype it and see if it actually matches that. Yeah. Well, and, you know, Nick posted something on one of his threads when people were saying, bring back the dodge jump. The problem with this prototype is that it doesn't include the, <laughs> the dodge jump. Um, and his response was, you know, I he likes the dodge jump because it, 
brings with it a sense of mastery that you don't really get with a lot of other types of movement. But it also comes with a negative implication where it moves the engagement distance further apart. And if you ever run into a situation where your engagement is really close, it's easier for you, easy for you to say, I'm getting out of here, I'm going to increase the distance again. Let's go back to a hit scan battle. So his, you know, his question was, do, does anyone have any ideas of how to keep these components of the game and bring the player engagement distances closer? You know, so far I haven't really seen anybody show anything right. that would actually <laughs> do that. But, you know, I want to reiterate, I'm not against additional movement stuff. I Mantling, it seems like an interesting idea. Wall dodging, I love wall dodging. There's no reason not to include it. In fact, both of Nick's prototypes right now have kind of a boost dodge bug, quote unquote, <laughs> bug in them, where you can capitalize on the vertical momentum of a jump to get a bigger boost out of wall dodging. And I actually think that's a pretty compelling idea as long as it's balanced, balanced properly. But the, the nice thing with a boost dodge is that it gives you, that it doesn't actually give you a lot of horizontal distance but it does give you some vertical momentum and, and a way to get to places where you normally can't just jump to or dodge to or wall dodge to, but there's also some finesse to it. There's a skill involved, and it's not something that everyone can just hit on a whim every single time. Whenever you're under stress from fighting or something, it's going to be harder to execute a boost dodge than when you're just trying to get up to a power-up and there's nobody around. Well, I think that's all we got time for for now. As always, please subscribe to our channel and leave comments, and we will respond to them. Uh, see you guys next week.